Hi, everyone. Okay, it is June 5, 2021. If you have not read The Soviet Art of Brainwashing, a synthesis of the Russian textbook on psychopolitics, I highly recommend reading it. Now, they concentrate here on the fields of psychiatry and psychology, but this can be adapted to any field, all institutions. Psychopolitics, the art and science of asserting and maintaining dominion over the thoughts and loyalties of individuals, officers, bureaus, masses, and the effecting of the conquest of the enemy nations through mental healing. I'm going to read some of the forward, the address by Labyrinth Pavlov, Pavlovish, Pavlovish Beria. Who is this man? A scary man. Okay, I'll link below to everything, but this is Beria. Now, 1940, the Soviet Union executed 22,000 Polish officers, intellectuals, and others deemed problematic to Soviet rule. The author was Lavrenty Beria, chief of the Soviet secret police. Beria was an extremely evil, he, one of those evil incarnate. The author, okay, I've read that, I'm sorry. Beria was not simply a detached administrator of death. He was a serial rapist who employed the apparatus of the state to his ends. On warm nights during the war and uh, war years, Beria was often driven slowly through the streets of Moscow in his armored Packard limousine. He would point out young women to be detained and escorted to his mansion where wine and a feast awaited them after dining Beria would take the women into his soundproofed office and rape them. Beria's bodyguards reported that their orders included handing each victim a flower bouquet as she left Beria's house, the implication being that to accept that bouquet, it made it consensual, and refusal of the bouquet meant arrest of the woman. Okay, there's an awful lot here. And you know what? I'm tired of this evil that, well, it's it seems to be surrounding us in an ever-expanding uh, density. So... American students at the Lenin University, I welcome your attendance at these classes on psychopolitics. Our fruits are grown in chaos, distrust, economic depression, and scientific turmoil. Ah, might we be living that? At least a weary populace can seek peace only in our offered communist state at last only communism can resolve the problems of the masses. A psychopolitician must work hard to produce the maximum chaos in the fields of mental healing. The psychopolitician must crush every homegrown variety of mental healing in America. They must be discredited. The, the, the mental healing that Barry is talking about, the effective mental healing, that must be discredited, defamed, arrested, stamped upon, even by their own government, until there is no credit in them and only communist-oriented healing remains. You must work until every teacher of psychology, unknowingly or knowingly, teaches only communist doctrine under the guise of psychology. 
You must labor until every doctor and psychiatrist is either a psychopolitician or an unwitting assistant to our aims. You must labor until we have dominion over the minds and bodies of every important person in your nation. You must work until suicide arises from mental imbalance is common and calls forth no general investigation or remark. You must dominate, as respected men, the fields of psychiatry and psychology. You must dominate the hospitals and the universities. Psychopolitics is a solemn charge. With it, you can erase our enemies as insects. You can cripple the efficiency of leaders by striking insanity into their families through the use of drugs. You can wipe them away with testimony as to their insanity. By our technologies, you can even bring about insanity itself when they seem to resist. Should independent researchers actually discover means to undo psychopolitical procedures, you must not rest. You must not eat or sleep. You must not stint one tiniest bit of available money to campaign against it, discredit it, strike it down, render it void. Ah, by psychopolitics, create chaos. Leave a nation leaderless. <laughs> well, I think we're there. Kill our enemies and bring to earth through communism the greatest peace man has ever known. Thank you. Yay, American students. Okay, so this was a very, very long time ago. Do not think that, that no, uh, every institution has not been in filled, uh, infiltrated by communists because they have. And we are living a communist takeover. You know, I was doing research on the connection between Black Lives Matter and China, which I will post a video on hopefully today. Oh, there is so much. So much. Now, um, I will link below. You can read. Uh, you know, there are many chapters. The, the, uh, the History and Definition of Psychopolitics, The Constitution of Man as a Political Organism, Man as an Economic Organism, The State Goals for the Individual and Masses, An Examination of Loyalties and How to Break Those Loyalties and Shift the Loyalties to Communism, the general subject of obedience, history and definition of psychopolitics, degradation, shock, and endurance, the organization of mental health campaigns, conduct under fire, the use of psychopolitics in spreading communism, violent remedies, recruiting of psychopolitical dupes, the smashing of religious groups, and proposals which must be avoided. You know, the general subject of obedience. Obedience is the result of force. Concurrent with force is brutality. If carried far enough, it invokes obedience. Cancel culture, people losing their uh, jobs for daring to say all lives matter or okay I don't want to go off on a tangent what I want to show you is this number one the feeling of pity I usually know when I'm talking to a white person because they always will attempt to invoke a feeling of pity in me apparently this like works amongst white people I don't think that they get that my internal response to that is I'm trying to like pick the little like leeches off of me. 
Number two, arguing. This will always be a white person who wants to flip the conversation to get you to answer their questions. They need a psychopathic level of control. So they have to tell you about it when they feel dismissed or offended. Exit. Number three, comparison. I can rarely have a conversation with a white person without them needing to compare themselves to me or their life to mine. This is because white people feel like everything is chronically unfair for them. Don't be fooled, this is their entitlement. If none of these things happen, good job, you picked good company. No a psychiatrist in New York City who unbelievably gave a talk uh, a New York City shrink tells Yale audience she fantasizes about shooting white people in the head. No joke. Uh, Aruna Killa Nanny, a New York City based psychiatrist, told an audience at the Yale School of Medicine in April that she had fantasies of, quote, unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, unquote, spewed the race-hating virtual uh, remarks in which she also said she'd walk away from the shooting with a bounce in her step. Okay, I'm going to read more of this, another article. This is a scary, very scary, dangerous woman. Why isn't she canceled? Ah, because there's an agenda. She said this in her talk, we are calm, we are giving, too giving, meaning non-white people. They use our responses as confirmation that we're crazy or have emotional problems. It always ends that way. Happens every time, like a goddamn timer. You can count it down. Nothing makes me angrier than a white person who tells me not to be angry because they have not seen real anger yet. Before talking about how she systematically cut off most of her former white friends around five years ago, that's what she said. So, um, you know, These people, this is part of the Marxist takeover. And everybody should be very concerned, seriously concerned, about what is taking place in this country right now. Because all of this is going to explode into a violence that we've never, ever seen before. And do not think it's black people doing this. This is an agenda. They couldn't use the economic um, oppressor and oppressed in our country, so they shifted to race. You know, it's... Uh... All right, I I'll get back to this, but... Here's another article. You can listen to her talk. Click on the link below. Listen to this woman. She clearly has issues, but those issues work for the agenda, and she will not be canceled. Oh, she might have Yale instead of uh, posting that talk she gave publicly, well, they apparently just uh, put it internal to those who would, you know, actually listen to it. But quotes from her lecture. This is the cost of talking to white people at all. The cost of your own life as they suck you dry 
There are no good apples out there. White people make my blood boil. I had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, burying their body and wiping my bloody hands as I walked away, relatively guiltless with a bounce in my step, like I did the world a effing favor. White people are out of their minds, and they have been for a long time. We are now in a psychological predicament because white people feel that we are bullying them when we bring up race. They feel that we should be thanking them for all that they have done for us. They are confused, and so are we. We keep forgetting that directly talking about race is a waste of our breath. We are asking a demented, violent predator who thinks that they are a saint or a superhero to accept responsibility, and it ain't going to happen. They have five holes in their brain. It's like banging your head against a brick wall. It's just like sort of not a good idea. White people are demented, violent predators. Who listens to this woman? That this is considered okay, and yet, well, the latest uh, that I've heard, Naomi Wolf, suspended from Twitter, how dare she suggest that children wearing masks are abusive, and you know now she's considered an anti-vaxxer. Um, She's crazy. So, we don't want to have someone who actually speaks the truth on, in the public square because we've got agendas going on to take over our country. But this psychiatrist who is unbelievably, I guess she's got clients, and I feel for them, um, this is also what she said. We need to remember that directly talking about race to white people is useless because they are at the wrong level of conversation. Addressing racism assumes that white people can see and process what we are talking about. They can't. That's why they sound demented. They don't even know they have a mask on. White people think it's their actual face. We need to get to know the mask. The poster for this event, Child Study Center Grand Rounds. Child, the psychopathic problem of the white mind. And down here, learning objectives. At the conclusion of this activity, participants will be able to set up white people's absence of empathy towards black rage as a problem, understand how racism is part of the mind, that white mind that arose during colonialism with a series of lies around violence, understand how white people are psychologically dependent on black rage. Whoa! People are actually making these... They are speaking publicly with these outrageous statements that are so inflammatory but untrue. And I'm not claiming that every white person is an angel. No. But this is really, well, when you look at what's happening in our country, and then you come across how violent are those speaking about white people, how they should die, how they should be gassed, how they, oh, if you don't know, I'll show you but it's happening. So, uh, here, 
here, what did Yale do with this talk? Um, Yale had promised her footage of the talk uh, would be released to the public. Instead, after a series of delays, it was released internally, only available to anyone with a school ID. So this incredibly angry, violent woman took to TikTok to push the video of her talk to be made public. All right. You want to listen to this? So there's a disclaimer that Yale had to put about how violent my talk was. I'm going to read it to you. This video contains profanity and imagery of violence. Yes. Yale School of Medicine expects the members of our community to speak respectfully to one another and to avoid the use of profanity as a matter of professionalism and acknowledgement of our common humanity. Yale School of Medicine does not contone imagery of violence or racism against any group. I'm the violent one. I'm the crazy one. I'm the profane, disrespectful one. No professionalism. Fuck, I didn't see that coming. Oh wait, I did. I began my talk by saying that if I start talking about race in this way, I'm gonna be seen as the crazy, psychotic one. And white people just followed my fucking textbook like a goddamn script. So there's a... Okay. Uh, first of all, you know, psychiatrists and psychologists, therapists, how they could get on social media and post this. Well, uh, okay, this woman is really, she is just, so profoundly screwed up. But how they can do this on social media, you know, when their clients could actually see this, okay, well, whether or not this woman was indoctrinated into psychopolitics, she is either directly using that psychopolitics training, or she's one of those unwitting, unwitting, uh, unwitting, I, I, I can't, this woman is so not professional. So um, I, I, look, I don't even know what to call this. You know, I mean, here she's posting this video claiming that she's like has to defend herself against claims that maybe her talk was violent she wants to put a revolver to white people's heads bury them have bloody hands um and i'm the violent one okay this is how unbelievably screwed up Americans are. There's an awful lot of people who will, who will say things and then just turn around and either, you know, use the gaslighting techniques or they just don't really get what they have said but claim that those who actually know what they've said and confront them on them, well, they're the crazy ones, not the woman spewing this violent, violent, disgusting violence out of her mouth. No, it's not me. Wow. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm just gonna end this here. You know, what we are seeing happening, you know, it's also pretty friggin' scary. Young Americans trust college professors more than military and police and religious leaders. Well, 
the universities, colleges, they have been infiltrated. They are simply communist indoctrination centers to just uh, like on a conveyor belt, put out the activists to work the agenda, the Marxist-Leninist agenda or Mao's agenda to take over the United States. But that they trust their college professors more. Okay. Unfortunately, most individuals in this country have never, ever been, you know, put on a trajectory to trust their own self first. To trust once it's earned. To trust but to verify, to look into what the professors are actually Telling you, teaching you, no. You know, and what does that mean? The dumbing down of America, poised to accelerate. And it will. And it will. You know, let me see how many of these I can get through. Now, I am white, therefore a racist, declares liberal professor. In latest proof, U.S. academics are fueling racial tensions. And yes, they are. And they're doing it deliberately. Because we have been infiltrated. I'm sorry for being white. A white American. These are um, responses to somebody just saying, please apologize for being white. I apologize for being white. Damn sorry for being white. It wasn't my choice. I hate it. You know, college senior earns degree with thesis celebrating Mao Zedong and black Marxism. She was praised, praised for her anti-capitalist conversion and celebrated for the work, the 48-page document celebrated the Chinese Chinese Communist Chairman for helping inspire the militant African American organization, and they have. The Black Liberation Movement and and Mao. There's a link there. Professor wishes for death of Trump supporters while studying intellectual humility. <laughs> funded by large grant. University won't say if he violated code of conduct. This was an Australian professor. I see nothing wrong with it. Rhode Island professor defends murder of right-wing protester. More of this, please. That's the Australian professor of moral psychology. Uh, used Twitter to call for the death of Trump supporters. And that's not taken down. That's not hateful. Religion professors argue evangelical Christians are white racists who may end up killing us all. Stanford student senator says white people need to be eradicated. Brandeis, dean, all white people are racists stating that I hate whiteness. Iowa State professor says she limits interactions with white people as much as possible. Professor claims that violence against Asians from non-white people is still caused by white supremacy. I guess we white people have so much power, we don't even have to know the black person who is assaulting an Asian American. It's our fault because we're so powerful that we can control the behavior of all black people. Isn't it amazing? Student calls for probe of Columbia professor who called him a neo-Nazi, told him to drop dead for defending Trump. 
see something wrong with this? Campus paper, editor-in-chief, couldn't walk past a white person without shaking. Yeah, and it goes on. California professor, Trump supporters are white nationalist terror supporters. All of them. Republicans need to suffer. A Drake professor triggers free speech debate with hateful tweets against men and conservatives. Hateful, vulgar tweets from an associate English professor, Beth Younger, who called for Republicans to suffer. White people are inherently racist, argues diversity expert hired by elementary school district. So this is this, pre-K all the way on up. Oh, all the way on up. Medical schools, they're all right in with this. Bernard College, Barnard College instructor discusses blowing up and gassing whites in coming race war. The demonization of white Americans is official education and corporate and government policy. And if you can't see this, you are simply not very informed about what is currently taking place in the good old U.S. of A. You know, and then you listen to these people. I guess she's an actress. Who is this? I don't know who this is. Listen to this. I have an announcement. I never again want to hear that white privilege doesn't exist. This woman tried to break into the fucking Capitol building and she was pushed back and maced. And she's literally stunned about it. Look at her, she's flabbergasted. How could they mace me? I was only trying to commit treason with 600 of my closest friends and the two brain cells we share. This white woman just lost her ever-loving mind that there were consequences for sedition. Do not proceed to tell me that white people aren't absolutely coddled from birth when this everyday American thought that terrorism was okay when she did it. If that doesn't scream, society's never told me no. I don't know what does. <laughs> well, I guess the communist mental healing has been effective. Always tell me like, hate is such a strong word. And yes, it is. But these are some strong ass stories I hear. I can figure out how to reconcile that in my head and in my heart. I hate white people. So people always tell me, like, hate is such a strong word. This is what she said. The video goes in and out. Um, and yes, it is, but these are some strong-ass stories I heard. Who'd you hear them from? Professors. Heard it through my elementary training, my indoctrination. I hear it mainstream media. I hate white people. Bada bing. The propaganda worked. Here she is again. Dear white people, just because you're tired of hearing about race doesn't mean you get to stop hearing about race. Do you know who else complains when they don't get precisely what they want when they want it? Babies! <laughs> Do you Are you recognizing the issues, the personal issues that people... This is... this... Okay, I, I, I hope you do. I block white people. There is nothing white people can say and do that is creative, profound, and, in, and intimidating. Oh, okay. Well, there's nothing white people can say and do that is creative, profound, and intimidating. Mm, did you really mean the... In oh, well, whatever. Um. Is this a trick question? Oh, my gosh. Wait, look at how big this hole is. Hmm. I shouldn't have shown that. That's how big my hatred for Caucasians is. So if you're one of those people that don't think everything is about race, 
kindly and generously fuck off. Because I can promise you, Google literally anything that comes to your head and it's racist. You know what? I'll do it right now. Let me just think of something. Let me let me think. So I got a chair right here. Let's look up if chairs are racist. But I want y'all to see this. This is human hair. This is literally human hair. Imagine how many slaves it took to put human hair in this seat. It's the full seat, the full interior of the seat is human hair. It's human, not horse, not. So if you want. Going pizza pasta, pizza pasta. I feel sick like a. Sorry, but former white supremacists don't get to decide whether or not they are reformed. Being reformed takes a lifetime of work, unlearning, and giving back to the communities you harm. Making a quirky TikTok where you admitted to supporting a white supremacist isn't cute. You are not reformed just because your politics change. I'm tired of marginalized communities constantly voicing concern for safety just because liberals are so quick to welcome back reformed conservatives into the fold of leftism without actually understanding what reform looks like. White liberals will literally pat former Nazis on the back simply for not believing that marginalized people should die anymore. It's beyond the bare minimum. You should not be expected to be nice to these people at all. Kindness towards people who had bigoted phases in their life is not owed nor expected. I will never applaud someone for no longer wanting me dead. It's this kind of complacency that radicalizes people in the first place. You can't just say, hey, I'm no longer a white supremacist. Please be nice to me. That's not how it works. Does, does any of this remind you, you know, of 1984 and the buildup to the two minutes of hate? These people actually think that they're, I guess, good people and they're filled with hate. Well, I just wanted to say this one thing and people are probably going to get mad at me, but white women are a danger to people of color. I just want Okay, so I'm going to be posting more videos. Uh, we've got a problem, and it's a very serious, serious problem. It is not coming from the black community. This is the agenda. You know, if we had the kind of economy that had clear divisions, you know, between the oppressed and the oppressor, they would be using economy. They would be using those class divisions. Instead, they're using race divisions. And you know, <laughs> what is really amazing is that so far, they have actually been successful. The, all of this race talk denies, denies how far we have come as, in, as Americans. It denies all of the progress. That's what really pisses me off for anyone to believe this horseshit that, you know, what are parents doing with their children? What are you doing? Are you not countering all of the lies that these kids are hearing and accepting, inculcated in? We're at a very dangerous point.